Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we have another episode for Project Rising Sun for you today. Um, before we actually get into it, I just wanted to you know thank everyone that's been subscribing. Um, thanks to all of you. We've hit the point now where we can actually start selling t-shirts like the one I'm wearing today. Um, so you know if it's something you might be interested in the future, look out for that because we're going to be putting the link up. Um, we've got a couple you know designs coming out um, just to kind of promote what we're doing. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested, just keep looking for it. Uh, this episode in particular, we're just going to pick up right where we left off last time, which is talking about laying up the inside of these panels. Uh, last time we were here, we did the outside layup, and now it's time to do the inside layup. Uh, we're going to cover the, you know, the inside layup like I have been, you know, talk talking over recorded video because of the respirator. But I also want to touch on a few uh, subjects such as covering the round rod before we get into that. So again, this isn't going to be a, you know, a really long episode, but there's some things that I want to get out there and just kind of explain a little bit different. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we're going to go with it. So first we're going to talk about the metal, the round rod, fiberglass, how that all bonds. Then we'll actually get into some of the uh, fiberglass layup on the inside of the panels. And then from there, we're going to talk about... Uh, what's coming up next. So with all that, let's get into some video. Okay, so I have explained, you know, encasing this round rod multiple times. Um, apparently I haven't explained it good enough. <laughs> so this is another kind of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And this is probably gonna be the last time that I explain this, but here we go. So when I started my career, I started as a welder. And when I you know, started, I was taught to clean my metal, get all the mill scale, you know, corrosion, whatever, off your surfaces so that when you're welding, you're actually welding metal to metal. Um, I took that kind of theory and I apply it to my fiberglass. It, particularly when I'm doing something like this where I'm encasing metal inside my fiberglass. Now I have not laid up the inside yet. Um, and I did that purposely so I could illustrate this point. And if you look right here on this edge, you can see I have feathered this fiberglass back down to this round rod. Now I can take my fingernail and you know, there's nowhere that I can catch. This has been really, 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 really feathered back to the point where you can see this transition line between glass and metal. Now again, I do not recommend taking fiberglass and bonding it straight to metal. Uh, it can work, it can actually last for quite some time, but the reality is there's a better than average chance that at some point the fiberglass is gonna delaminate from the metal. Uh, a typical example of that would be someone taking an aftermarket hood scoop and trying to like, you know, fiberglass it right onto a hood. I've seen it work and I've also seen them fly off. So again, when I do it, and again, talking about encasing, what I'm trying to do, and I'll pick this up, is visually see that my fiberglass and my metal has a really, really good bond. And you can see right here in this edge, you know, it's really hard to tell where the fiberglass ends and where the metal starts. And that's really what I wanna see because when I have this transition point right here, I can see there's no pinholes, there's you know nothing in the way of, of uh, impurities or something that I would feel that this would delaminate. And when I lay up the inside of the panel and here, I will do the same thing. I will feather this edge back like I have done on the top side here so that I can come back with additional fiberglass and wrap around that will fully encase you know all this round rod and i'll be doing it inside all the way around to do this now again do i recommend putting fiberglass straight on metal no i do not you can do it with like a panel bonder or something like that that's a different story but actually straight lay up onto metal i never recommend doing it unless you're doing something like this which is encasing and that's just completely different and now I've had people say, well, yeah, that's all well and good, but that's just still going to fall apart in time. So again, let me elaborate. For this round rod 
to actually break free of the fiberglass, right? After this is fully encased, it is going to have to break every single one of these welds. On top of that, the, the foam that I used for a backer for the fiberglass has been bond bonded with a contact cement. When that stuff dries, it is rock hard. So this metal, in order for it to work itself free from the fiberglass, these welds would have to break. All the joints here with the contact cement, they would all have to break. And at that point, this metal would then have to start vibrating and working itself through at least an eighth inch or more of fiberglass to what actually would become a problem. So for me, the only way something like this is actually going to become a problem is if the thing was actually hit, you know, collision, whatever. And at that point, this part's ruined anyway. So it's not to say that I'm right and everybody's wrong or vice versa. It's just simply to illustrate what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So like I said, this is probably the last time that I'm going to explain this. Um, I feel like it's kind of beating a dead horse here at this point, but I understand people don't understand. They don't approve, whatever the case may be. So to set the record straight, this is what I do and how I do it. So now that I've explained all that, let's get into some inside layup. Now we're going to get into the actual fiberglass layup for the inside of the panel. And it's a little bit different than the outside, only in that I cannot... Uh, make a template and get a full piece. So what you're seeing me have to do is basically tear small sections and put them into place so that I can fiberglass them. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit different is on the inside of the panel, I'm having to tie the new fiberglass back into the base panel that I originally made to start you know, the entire process. If you've been following along, then you know that uh, when I first did the initial layup for the base panels, after I was done, I sanded everything down. And that was so that when I got to this point, I did not have to worry about scuffing anything on the inside. Um, it was simply a matter of cleaning and prepping uh, to get everything ready for laying the fiberglass. Here, I'm just simply working around um, the parking sensor cutout. I do not want to actually put anything in there because it is actually finished off on the inside. Here's a good example of me having to use, you know, larger sections of torn mat um, to put into place. And you can see how I have to work the mat back down into uh, the inside and actually kind of fold it over so that I can tie it back into the base panel. This is, you know, again, to keep everything watertight, um, make sure that there's a good bond between the base panel and the new fiberglass that I'm laying up. You can see I'm using my chip brush here to really push that fiberglass down into that joint. And once I have it, you know, in place, then I'm simply going to work uh, the fiberglass mat and, you know, wet it out to keep it in place. Again, I'm trying really hard not to get around the parking sensor cut out because anything that, you know, goes over that uh, edge, I'm going to have to remove to make sure that I can get the parking sensor mounting bracket uh, actually installed. These sections are definitely a little bit trickier uh, because you can't really go straight on with your chip brush. Uh, so, you know, you have to really wet it out good and uh, make sure that there are no air pockets. Here again, I'm just having to tear and, you know, add where I want to build things up. I'm actually doing two layers of fiberglass. Uh, this is just showing the very first layer. And you can see how easy this is actually going down. Uh, I'm not really, you know, pushing all that hard. I'm just, you know, using a good amount of resin here. I'm really going to soak it out. I also want to make sure that I'm kind of adding a little extra resin to make sure that if there's uh, any kind of absorption from the foam underneath, that I still have enough resin to fully wet out the fiberglass. 
it's actually not that difficult. It's pretty easy to see if you don't have enough resin. It just shows like it's kind of white, like you don't have enough resin down, and you just simply add more. Here I am actually tearing, and that is simply to put in place. I have a bunch of my mat pre-torn into small sections, and from there I will tear them into smaller sections just so I can layer it up. This is, you know, a good example of why I like using chop strand mat as opposed to like a woven cloth. Um, to actually build things up in sections, you can do it pretty uniformly. And that's kind of what I'm going for. I want a good, you know, consistent layer. Here's a better angle of me having to work back down into the transition from the base panel and, you know, the foam. I'm actually adding quite a bit of resin down in that joint, um, only because that I cannot get much of a roller or any kind of tool in there. So I'm really going to saturate it, you know, heavily. Plus, it will help you know, if there was anything on like on the foam on the inside that wasn't fully saturated out, um, this will help saturate that foam and make sure again that it's, you know, good strong joint and watertight. You can see how I'm working out past the uh, round rod. And that is so I can, you know, trim all the excess and then come back and feather the edges like I have done on the outside. So I think at this point, all we're going to do is speed up the video so you get a good idea of what it took to wet this out. So after, you know, the first layer was laid down, what I'm going to do is just take my roller and I'm going to even out all the fiberglass and chase out any kind of air pockets, air bubbles that I can see. I'm actually going to be doing two layers of mat on the inside, just like I did on the outside. Um, but again, it gets a little repetitive to show the same thing over again. So this is basically the final step uh, after the fiberglass is fully wet out. Again, I'm just really working hard here to make sure that I have one uniform surface and I'm really, you know, being mindful to chase out any air pockets, any air bubbles, whatever, uh, to make sure that there's no way or minimize risk of delamination down the road. And again, I'm just gonna work all the way back into the panel as close as I can get to that joint way in the back. So again, I'm just gonna speed up the video so you can see what it took to get uh, all this rolled out. Hopefully that explanation of encasing the round rod kind of, you know, answered a lot of the questions that I've been getting. But if not, you know, please feel free to ask. Um, the layup for the inside of the panels, again, you know, I've been doing a lot of fiberglass work. It's nothing you haven't seen me do already, a lot of it. Um, and there's still going to be more. Uh, next episode, what we are going to be doing is actually finishing off encasing these parts. What I will have to do is all the sections with the ports, they will have to be blended out. Uh, the bottom of the wing is going to have to be fiberglassed, as well as, you know, the main wheel arch here. So at that point, these panels really will be fully encased. Uh, we'll be moving on to, you know, 
internal stuff like the internal lip and, and body work, et cetera, you know, we're getting a lot closer to bonding these things. The car is, you know, getting a lot closer to the finishing stages. So, you know, again, if you have questions, you have comments, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to answer. Um, and as always, thank you for watching.